Sunday. It is Sunday. And I'm still in the clothes from Saturday. But I have to get this living room in order. I, I still have a half of that bin full of clothes. I swept up all in the living room and kitchen to get it ready to mop. And I am going to wash my behind. Because I don't want to be dirty in a clean house. So, see ya! Hey y'all, so I'm finally at peace with how everything worked out between me and my children's fathers. And apparently it's been on y'all's mind about where some of them are. So I think we're going to talk about baby father number 13. And I'm going to talk to y'all about it while I clean my low income section 8 government funded home. Okay? If that's okay with you. <laughs> Do you mind? He came to me in a dream, baby. I had a premonition. What's his name? It, look, his name don't even matter. Because we was having some makeup love, baby. And it felt so and real. You don't need to know his name. We just gonna call him number 13 because I'm trying to protect his identity. I'm also trying to figure out why that little situation in the room was so enjoyable. Why was it so good? Because he was in my room, but when I touched him, my fingers just slipped through his body. But it it was but it was all him. I felt it. I don't know, y'all. Y'all think I'm crazy? What y'all think? Y'all think it could have possibly been like a hologram? Somebody playing a trick on me? Lord have mercy on me. I hope I'm not pregnant. Cause if I am, where's it gonna fit? I'm already impregnated with quintuplet food babies. And he just started telling me why he never returned home. And we gonna get to that part, but can we have a moment of silence for the clean ass? Feeling good, gonna wash my behind. Getting the spray down. This what he told me, y'all. Do y'all think I should believe him? Y'all think he telling the truth or not? Nah? Because part of me want to believe him, and then part of me know in my heart that he lying. Because how it started off, it was a Tuesday evening, and he said he wondered if his mom could still slap him into next week because he needed his check early. And I was like, that's a good idea, you know. And that made me proud because that's my man being proactive because he knew our power bill was past due, baby. He was going to get that money, honey. And he was like, all right, he was going to go to his mama house, see if she could do that for him, and he was going to walk his pet snail. But he had left his feet in the car. So he asked me for my car keys so he could go get them out the car. And I guess this is where things take a turn for the worse. Because all this time, I'm thinking he stole my car. But he said that his feet kidnapped him and pressed the pedals and drove him to a forest where he ran out of gas. And when he got out the car, all of a sudden, he was met by 10 grizzly bears with chainsaws for arms. Mind you, his feet was being hard-headed or footed. I don't know, y'all. These was his words. They would not leave the car whatsoever. So in order for him to escape these bears, he had to run on his hands. And I'm like, that don't sit well with me because why is you in the forest coochie popping on a handstand? He said that's not the point. But eventually his arms got tired and they wore out on him. And when he fell out, he said that he came across a slippery slope that lasted three minutes down into a dungeon he was slipping and sliding into a dungeon and it was very deep he felt like he was in the center of the earth and i'm like dog you ain't even gotta lie like that if you was at diddy's house just say that because of you i ain't got no car and if i ain't got no car i ain't i can't have no job and if i ain't got no job i can't pay no bills and if i can't pay no bills then how, how do i live without you i want to know how do i breathe without you when my money is low how do i ever ever survive we will return to your regularly scheduled programming <laughs> My uncle surprised me with the pop-up visit with my cousin, so most of my time went to them. So I was unable to mop the floor and do my office. But I believe I'm gonna mop my floor tonight because they going in the bed by eight o'clock. I'm making some cheeseburger, uh, some cheeseburger mac. Onyx was supposed to be my big helper with that today, but she been cutting up, man. She wild. She a wild one. What I'm gonna do with her? So that's what's on the stove right now. And yeah, I. I I, I gotta mop this floor. I'm gonna mop this floor. 
And I think I'm gonna take this uh these ponytails out. They affect my mood. Ever since I put them in, I've been angry, and I think it's because my ponytail is too tight. I'm pretty sure this is not good. <laughs> Okay, now, boom. He said he was in there for what felt like six days and six nights. And all of a sudden, the dungeon he was in just gaped open. And he saw, like, a bioluminescent green light. All of the lights. Turn up the lights in here, baby. And that was the background music. That was the background music that he heard when he saw the light. And then he said he does not remember anything that took place after that. And he tries to run away, but he gets lost every time. He asked me if I could put together a search and rescue team to come and get him from outer space because he lost and all the stars look the same. And I thought about it, and I might could help because this may be the night that my dream might let me know. All the stars are close. Uh, all the stars are... Then I said, psych! I told that nigga this is not Space Jam. He better get back to them roots and use them star systems that Harriet and them used to use. Because I was pissed. How dare you show up in my dreams after all these years? And he just kept telling me, like, baby, baby, I'm in an alternate universe. It's only been a couple of minutes, even though in my world, it's been some years. So at this point, he's getting very frantic and anxious because we've been conversing over a good amount of time. And he's just telling me, like, he cannot get found. The Anunnaki or Anunnaki, I don't Anunnaki, Anunnaki, whatever type of species that he's running from, he's saying that they cannot find him here. He has to find somewhere else to go, and this is his last opportunity to seek help, to try to come get him from wherever he is. And apparently, I'm the last resort because I'm the only person that can see him. He say when he tried to go to his sister, brother, cousin, mama, daddy house, they all get scared and run the hell away. And I'm the only person that sat there and listened to his tired ass. And I noticed that he wasn't appearing as clear as he did when he initially came into my room. It's like he was fading away. You know how, like, Fat Albert lost his color? Like, he was losing his color and he was fading away. So, I reassured him. I was like, okay, I'll call them folks and we'll put an Amber Alert out on you. Just give me the number to the Anunnaki corporate. But little do he know, I'm only calling to speak to the head representative to see if I could put him on child support and out of space. Because if he could show up in my room appearing to be real, that money could hit my bank account and appear to be real too. So that's what happened with Baby Daddy 13. Let me know if y'all want any more story times on my other baby daddies. <laughs> that baby booty clean. Say ain't nobody. Don't phase me. I'm just so fresh and clean. OMG, what a beautiful sight. It's you, it's me, your eyes the light. Baby, don't be scared, cause I don't bite, but miss that like button. And bitch, I might. IJK, IJK, we gonna be okay. Stick around. I'm posting content on her every day. Bars.